I know I was meant to be in Kathmandu last year. Wait, is that a place? That's, yep, that's... Is it the I haven't even the brand! <laughs> <laughs> okay! <laughs> yeah, go travel! <laughs> phenomenal, iconic Rosanna Raymond. Yay! <laughs> um, <laughs> well, let's just dig in first and eat. I'm oh, very hungry. I don't know where to start. <laughs> I know. So for those who may not know you, you know, long-standing member of uh, Pacific Sisters mm -hmm. and founder of Savage Club, mm -hmm. can you just talk about, you know, your journey and how you got into the arts? Oh my gosh. Quite a long journey really, not mm. a planned one. I think going through the school system kind of banished any sort of artistic, creative mm. <laughs> sort of <laughs> feelings that I might have had in me. Yeah, when I left school I definitely wasn't going to become a Pacific star. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or an artist. I mean, I kind of felt, I was, yeah, I kind of, you know, I was a total rebel without a cause, really. I didn't really, you know, I didn't know myself, I didn't understand, I didn't even understand. I was down in Christchurch, mm. so I was away from a lot of my, my Pacific, my Samoan family who were up in Auckland. Mm. And I'd been in England as a kid as well, so I was really quite lost to, to like, you know, you know, I knew my Samoan grandmother and my dad were up in Auckland, so bit of a rebel without a cause really. Mm. Fell into muddling, so into the fashion industry. Cool. And, and that's when I sort of started to come up to Auckland a lot more and, and it was, and then I went away again. Then when I came back, I remember going, actually, you know what's hilarious is I heard some Islanders laughing mm? and my whole body went, oh, I am home. <laughs> oh, I understand myself. Yes. <laughs> It was classic because just nobody laughs like us. Yeah. In the whole world. Like the in the whole world. Love it. Yeah. yeah. Totally. And I remember going, oh my god, I'm an islander. <laughs> <laughs> Do island things with island people. <laughs> yeah, I sort of yeah, I I met Carrie, my husband, my mm -hmm. now husband, and we were living in the city, mm -hmm. right in the heart of Auckland, where nobody lived in the cent central. Nobody lived central. There was a hand. Oh, there was a handful. Yeah, and we found an old um, warehouse and, and and turned it into like a livable space. And then I, you know, the clubs were alive though. All the clubs were in town. Oh, cool. Yeah. So it was actually through the clubs that I started to meet other city kids and mm. islanders wow. that's the arts row and you know so there was and then they'd all disappear and, and sort of again but then there was a lot more people in still in Greyland, Westmere mm. so a lot of us were all still really central it wasn't sort of like it is today mm. but it was through the clubs and the music and just oh. like the hip-hop was just slowly coming up then and Mm. I remember up a posse moved up to Auckland and then I had my friend Tony Simons and she introduced me to her friend Annie O'Neill wow. and then I met Nephi and then actually through a lady called Morag that's um, where I met a whole amazing creative crew. That's so cool. Yeah they were, they were, they were so cool and, and then yeah, it was always in the clubs, met Nephi she introduced me to the Pacific Sisters, and and yeah. Wow. Yeah, I, I definitely think looking at um, the community and seeing that there's a huge influence from, you know, Pacific Sisters and yourself, uh, I can see it with artists nowadays, uh, which I think is awesome. It's, it's a whole new, a whole new gen and we, we yeah. love it. We love it because a lot of, lot of, you know, back then, a lot, you know, you know, mm. so shy, so shy to, to even be able to look at people in the eyes, mm. to, to kind of engage with the creative world. Mm. And then the parents at home going, it's yeah. great when you're going to get a real job. 
Yeah, like, I, mean, I remember Aleni like Tofonga, <laughs> who's like you know quite a well-known actor now. I remember his parents cutting his hair off because they didn't want him to, to um, you know, go do their things. Wow! I know. I mean, this was this is what, yeah. So it was a, it was really it was not seen as positive, mm. you know, and it's and it's taken, you know, some couple of decades to really actually create a space. Mm. You know, we've had to build it, it did not exist, but we built it. And that's, you know, and, and that's a lot of work from the creative community. And and now a lot, a lot of the, you know, now, now that it seems like the church community can sit a little, it sits a lot more even mm. with it. Whereas back in the 90s, it, yeah, it, it was a lot. Was it really like you Oh, yeah. It was like good, bad. Wow. Good, bad. Whereas, whereas now I think they can see that. You know that while we may challenge a lot of the thinking that, that yeah. there's, there's a lot of good in what we do and in the creative industries as mm. well and what it what it can do for our community. Mm. You know. I remember Joni. By by then the Pacific Sisters we've got a little bit more organised mm. and we've got a we had a studio up in Queen Street. Cool. Yeah, in the upper Queen Street, sort of just just down the, bo the bottom. Mm. So. You know, yeah, because we've become quite a tribe by then, and we used, to, you know, yeah. do big, we used to do big parties, and oh, and, and we decided. I think it was Joni, Joni Elulahia. She was really like, let's go to um, you know, oh, have you heard of Pack Fest? You know, <laughs> and it was all for traditional, traditional performing arts and, mm. and stuff, and we're like, oh, I don't know how we'll fit in. By then, we'd sort of done quite a few big shows. And, and we thought we'd put in an application. So we did, we put in an application. Yes. And um, I'll never forget the phone call. Yeah, Joni picked up the phone and it was um, the, the creative director for the festival. And he was mm. like, he wanted to speak to the Pacific Sisters. And he was like, he, he said, oh, it's very interesting, which is always like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's usually when you're gonna get white. <laughs> But he wanted to know more about us, and mm. and 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 it, he said, you know, well, what are you? And I remember, I remember Joni on the phone, kind of covering the thing, going, what are we? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, and then we kind of blurted out, oh, we're New Zealand-born Pacific Island um, artists. And he goes, oh, that's. But uh, yeah, it, it, you said interesting in a nice way. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. No. <laughs> yeah, and, and yeah, from there we got a formal invitation to Whoa. to sh yeah, we wanted to take a fashion show, but he said that was a bit too much. But we took it we took it and did it outside the festival, and we mm. took the tale of Ina and Tuna, which you know of mm. how the coconut came to the island. Yeah, because that was one story that brought us all together, the Tongans. Yeah, the Fijians, the Samoans, the Rarotongans, because you know we had such a diverse mix. Mm. Even Maori has a version that just doesn't end up in coconuts, but, but yeah, but there's still an eel and a woman involved. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Big black eel. <laughs> so, um, I know. So yes, yeah, so we started to um, we put together our first ever like like full on. Creative New Zealand proposal, and, mm. and we got some money. We got, cool. I, think, I think we got like thirty thousand, which was amazing. Whoa. Mind you, there was seventeen of us. Oh, <laughs> but that's still huge. I know, when we needed more. Yeah. So um, so we started fundraising. Mm. So we started making jewelry and up on K Road, and selling secondhand frock. What? Because we're all op shop freaks. So we, yeah. used to, we used to call it the Sunga Frock. So you'd have racks of Sunga Frock, or all the 70s. Oh, that's so oh, cool. You know, cause, yeah, and that's how we really started to make jewellery. Because mm. usually we'd make, you know, the big, big costumes. So I think we fundraised another, like, 50k or something. What? Yeah, and we went and stayed at, at Fiona's village in, in, in Malia, and it, mm. it became a seminal moment for us. Got chucked out of the festival because the Maoris plain. <laughs> we were like, oh, yeah. oh man, we got a uniform and everything. Yeah. Like, like, it was like, you know, but that showed you still, and that was in 98, so you still, there's still a lot of tension in Aotearoa about who had the right to represent Aotearoa. Wow. 
Wow. It, you know, but but it was it was you know, and we had an official invitation, and we had funding from Creative New Zealand, so we were feeling really you know confident yeah. and and seen. Mm. <laughs> I mean, it had a happy story in the end. Yeah. Okay. Because you know we ended up because um, always at that stage it was the Kapahaka group that mm. represents. You know, but we must have terrified them. Like they've all got like the nice kind of uniforms and, and the New Zealand flag, and we've got like the Te Noranga Te Tonga flag. Whoa! And, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, they must have like whoa, because you know a lot of our members were activists mm. and had been for. A, decades yeah so you know they couldn't quite get their heads around who we were and what we represented and mm. and then a couple of the young bloods from the kapahaka group ended up modeling in the in the show wow and then all the oh and then the komata went after it and then they were like and then we got reinstated in the sh in the, in the, <laughs> I know, in the happy story yeah but you know we really took that to heart mm. you know because here we were as new zealand born pacific islanders I mean, that year had been one of the Fijian coups, and yet they still had the Indian people, like they had the Fi native Fijians, and then they had the Indian crew representing Fiji, and we really were like, you know, we've got a lot of work to do, you know, to, yeah. to settle our, our sort of place mm -hmm. here in Aotearoa, and how to be a good, how to be a good kazi as well, yeah. how to be a good manuhiri. Mm. You know, and, and so that, that, that made us grow up a lot actually because yeah. we had to really sort of challenge ourselves to, mm. to our, you know, because you're coming from a place of deficit, so it's sort of hard to kind of, you know, acknowledge other people's pain when you're already in pain yourself. So, mm. so it was quite, yeah, it was, it was a really amazing journey. And just all the people that got us there, it was, it was incredible. This, you know, yeah. our, our communities, you know, we've always been loved by our community, which is, you know, and I think it's because we love them back. Mm. You know, and we do do the things for free, and we do do the hard work, and we, you know, we, it's, and, it, and it's shown. Mm. We're a small, tight community. Yeah. You know, if, you know, there, there's, and it's hard sometimes because it makes it extra competitive. Yeah, it does. You know, and that whole, you know, well, how come you got that? You know, there used to be a lot of that in the 90s. Oh, really? how come you got that? And we, there was a lot of anger. Wow. And, you know, and it seems to be, you know, now there's more platforms, so there's more more chances for yeah. everybody. Opportunities, yeah. Yeah, to have, have a fair share, but I think that old fighting spirit, but, you yeah. know, you know, that's why it's really important to just yeah sit down and do it out. Yeah, I mean yeah for me it's like I feel like this my mentality has been inspired by people that I'm surrounded by like yourself Raymond, um, Tupe, mm -hmm. Kat, and just always putting people on like I've ever since becoming an artist <laughs> you know like I've never thought of just myself. And um, you know, I'm always thinking of like my friends and the younger ones, like, oh, what? like, oh, that's a corporate GD. This guy will be really good at it, you know? And that's definitely from because of the people I'm surrounded by. And that's what kind of was like the reason why I created the collective to know. Just a collective of my friends to be together and create art and just create cool stuff. Yeah. <laughs> It's hard though, eh? It is really hard though. It's really hard. Life gets in the way. Yeah. Some people got work, some people fall in love, some people have a baby, you know, like, yeah. When you've been around for a while, you realise that, that it's not, that it's not permanent. You know, because mm. especially sometimes I think when you're young, and we, we used to have fights like that too. It's, you know, something would happen and you'd be like, oh my god, you think that's it? And then all of a sudden, five years later, it's like, and then 10 years later, it's yeah. like, oh, <laughs> you know, so I always, that's why I always, you know, when I think of, of, you know, if you're in it for the long game, you play it, you play, you, you know, you're working at a really different rhythm mm. than, than for the instant gratification of, yeah. of the next job or the next job, the next project. But that's what the kind of commodity based art world 
demands and expects from us. It's oh, what are you working on next? What are you working on next? Yeah. You know, and we've always got to have this kind of answer where actually sometimes it's, you know, it's just as rewarding and vital to have those moments of stillness so, mm. that, so that you can recharge, recalibrate, re-inspire yourself. Yes. Because, yeah, I've just come out of five years and then I burned out. Mm. And I could see it coming, and I could, yeah. you know, before when I was younger, I we didn't record, and you're, you're tougher too, so yeah, yeah, yeah you kind of just push through it, mm. and you know, and then, but <laughs> it's definitely I could see the warning signs, like, and you know, things like I was getting grumpy, I was starting oh. to not give a fuck, yeah, I was starting to, um, yeah, just be nothing inspired me, it was just really hard, you know, it was getting harder and harder to be inspired about what you, what I did and I was suddenly like, oh, I've hit the wall, what's that funny <laughs> yeah, sound, yeah. Donk. oh, it's the wall, mm. oh, there it is again, you know, and as you build up in your practice, yeah, you start to learn and understand about what you need and what, what, oh. yeah, what, you know, and it's really important because the collective, the collective's really important and supportive too, but and I remember years ago, um, somebody telling me, you, you know, you need a strong bunch of individuals to make a strong collective. Mm. Whereas a lot of people think they don't, they don't think that. They think you need one strong leader to lead the collective. But but you actually need a group of leaders that that can that can lead, not just be bossy. Yeah. And which is a which is a whole different art. And. Because, you know, if you take one chink out of the chain, like, you know, it's, it's that collective's still got to be strong enough to be able to, to carry through. Oh. And, and yeah, and, and so you learn the hard ways, man, the Pacific Sisters, we've had our fair share of tears and fears and, 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 you know, but I think what I'm most proud about is that because we had a base of love, of aroha, I mean, you take the, the art away, we've still got love. And I think I think that's one advice, you know, for, for collectives. Like if it's just there for money or just there for the gigs or the next gig, you know, if you take that away, what have you got left? Mm. If you've got friendship, if you've got yeah. Anofa, yeah. if you've got, you know, if you've got Akafagonga Tanga and Manaki Tanga and then then, you know Yeah, and and you don't always have to be on. The, the savages we're having a, we're having a break we've had a two year break because we're exhausted and oh. and that's okay you know oh. rather than oh what are you doing next what are you doing next like yeah. we're like we're all cool with that because we all know that we need a break it's crazy you say that so I need that sounds familiar it's to me <laughs> no it's hard yeah it's really hard. You know, and it's it's sort of like, yeah, and that's when, you know, it's, you know, we, the, at the end of that 10 years of hard out, like hard out, that's why I knew to break with the savages. I was like, oh, we just need a break. And that's cool. Yeah. And that's like allowed. That. We are allowed. allowed. Oh my goodness. We are allowed. You are allowed to move away. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And find all these other things, and you know, and it's like I was in England, and, and I started to develop the pro a project, and I brought brought in a lot of Pacific Sisters mm. as individual artists, not 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 as a collective. Oh wow! You know, so we just we, we learnt to work with each other in different ways. You know, yeah. whether it was distance, whether it was you know, f you know, and forgiveness. It's it's mm. still oh, yeah exactly. yeah. All, all of that. Yeah, oh, it's, yeah, it's cool. Um, I reflect back on my trip to Germany with Raymond, <gasps> and um, you know, hearing that you were there and um, helped out a lot in your works, and ah, uh, just for me of being there, I was like, man, we can actually travel to Europe and other places. I didn't, it just opened my eye. Like, I just always been in Auckland, and that's just all I've been like, New Zealand. But never really thought of we get, outside of that. We get pretty insular down here. We do. We it's really very do. common. I so noticed that. You know, I was like in my youth, I travelled, mm. and then then back. You know, in, in the, my forties. You know, and then I turned fifty in New York. I was just like, 
Wow. Oh, you're such a cool life. Look, I was so, I was so living my cool life, yeah. my, my best life, because you know, even when I was young, I was like, oh, you know. And then as you get older, you're like, ah, oh, New York, it's like for young people, blah blah blah. And then yeah. I got that fellowship. Yeah. And I was there for nine months. Oh like, my goodness, oh, what a dream. It was. I was like, so I just, you know, these just different phases. You know, mm. you've got phases without children. And then if you have children, then it puts you in a totally different time space. Yeah. And then they eventually go away. <laughs> <laughs> then they grow up, and then yeah. <laughs> and then you yeah. So I was just like with with, with mine. You know, I had a twenty-five mm. year marriage that that you know I got fired. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then you know, but then my kids they they had they were adult enough, so it wasn't like yeah. So all of a sudden I was like, and I had to like. I'm like, oh, once yeah. I got the hang of it, I was yeah. just like, oh my god, this is great, oh, thank you. Oh, wow. You know, I'm living a whole different life that I just, just never would have thought, you know, during all those years of turning things down, because I had kids, oh no, I can't do anything more than like, maybe a week or two, you know, yeah. and then all of a sudden you're out, hop, so you just, wow. it's just, we're taught that it's all over by, what, 30? Yeah. But it ain't. I don't believe that. It's a study. <laughs> yeah. I did want to hear, I'll uh, ask you, um, for me, in my journey, I've been, I've been navigating on how to put my love of different things together, which is obviously, you know, you put everything, you love so many things and you put it all, but for me, I've always just done dance, and now, and I recognise that I really love fashion and you know, music, like making music, and but it's just, I'm just so used to the one space that I feel like, I don't know, like, do I leave that, and yeah, I, I've been, this has been really weird, awkward space for me. Yeah, well, it's, it's interesting, I always, you know, I keep going, well, I called it an art practice for a reason, isn't it, isn't it, because you've got to keep practicing it, mm. so, you know, and then it's having the patience of, Step and the in the in the courage to step away from the dance for a while so you can pick up some new skills. And yeah. it, it, it is. It's actually it's just like where I had to put all my artwork down and do that M film. Mm. You know, and it, and it was, you know, a good two years. I mean, you you've got access to technology now that that none of us had. Like yeah. like like with the music thing, you can do that at home now. Mm. You know, and that can that can totally complement. You know, and it's not. It's and again, it's like a muscle too. Yeah. You know, it's like a muscle. It's sort of like starting off small, or giving yourself a break and go, go going back into the institution again. Mm. You know, that that's you know after. Yeah. Sometimes we need break, especially for the fashion, because fashion. I mean, there's there's styling, like being able to put looks together, but then there's construction. Yeah. And if you want to get into construction, then then it's definitely worth do, doing a course, mm. like a pattern making course, mm. so that you can understand construction. Yeah. And that, that is, it's a lot more physical than the music making. Mm. But, and that's just playing. Like I haven't played for so long, that's why sometimes I just, on Thursdays, I come to the studio, and sometimes if I haven't got anything to do, I'm kind of like, and then I'll just settle in and, Play. I love that. Oh, look, I really needed to, and, and and then I've been using my brain for so long. I felt like I haven't made anything for so long. Mm. So it's but it's time. Yeah. You know, and time is samani. Mm -hmm. You know. So, but but yeah, I've made Thursdays my day where I don't have any excuses. I just come here. With it. And, and I had, and I started off with a rule, I had to make something, so I just started making really small things. Yeah. And then started to build up again. I love that. Yeah. Because I was listening to Louise Portiki Bryant the other amazing. day. Oh, she's so amazing. She is so amazing. Oh, balls. oh my god, it is. <laughs> yeah, and she was actually, yeah, because she's another one. She dances, she um, makes music, she paints, she does this, and... Oh. And she said it took her it took her a long time to realise that she was allowed to do it all. That's what I'm learning. Isn't it? Yeah, because it's like, no, you're a dancer. Yeah. After I've years I was just like I was just like a, a a model. And I was like a model for like decades. I'm like, 
it's like 20 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> a few things. You know, people won't let you out in the box. Yeah. That's allowed. It's allowed. Yeah. And that's the great thing with you going over to, yeah. you know, you can actually see, you know, go, go, I mean, you've got music in your family. So yeah. That's, that's there, but yeah, go see what courses you can do and just, yeah, just start. And explore and experiment more. And yeah. That is the one advantage of the institution, I've realised. Mm. Well, do you have any advice for our young bloods out there wanting to make art or oh. do something here? <laughs> yeah, the, it's, it's hard, you know, it's hard. It's hard yeah. work. Well, it's not easy. Once you get over that, you're fine. <laughs> really is, eh? Just do it. And totally. Because I think if you're a creative person, you're always going to have these creative ideas. Mm. That's, you know, it's it's having that, that, you know, that time, that space. And sometimes it won't be at the forefront of, of what you do. You know, it might be at the back. You might mm. make something twice a year because you're looking after your mum or, your, or you've mm. got a job. You know, but it's always at the back. You know, I always go, and it's called an art practice for a reason because you've got to practice, practice, practice. Wow. I know. I remember one day I was like, oh, is that what they call it? Art practice? Because, yeah, okay. you do. Like, I remember my hands getting stiff when I hadn't done plating for a while, and then I had to really <laughs> do that. My eyes were as good as they used to be. <laughs> so, but now it's such an embodied practice within me. I don't even need my glasses to see half the stuff I'm doing because I could, I could just feel it. Yeah, wow. Because it's embodied, just like your dancing is embodied, it's in your body. Mm. That is just through repeat it and repeat and repeat. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I think I just, I was talking to my daughter the other day and I, and I read something and it's, you know, it was the difference between being, conf being confident and being courageous. Mm. And I thought, I was like, oh, that's amazing because, you know, I know a lot of confident people, myself included, but when you make those big leaps, it's when I'm being courageous. Yeah. You know, it's like actually having courage. And you don't have to be confident to be co courageous. You yeah. can make courageous decisions. And I think that that's that really, I thought, just changing that little bit of language sometimes is just just what you need to look at it from the different, different yeah. side. I love that. Yeah, be courageous. Period. <laughs>